Gaming is a crucial part of any flagship smartphone experience and today we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. This is the cream of the crop when it comes to design as well as hardware on board. And inside you're looking at the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset alongside 12 gigabytes of RAM as well as 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, if you wanna see my first impressions of the phone, that video is linked above. If you wanna see my full review of the smartphone, that is also linked above over on GN Tech. And if you wanna read my full review, that will be in the description down below. But as I said, this one is gaming focused and we're also gonna make sure that you get an idea of the battery performance of the smartphone. And that's something I like to do with all of these gaming tests. So we're starting off with a 100% on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. And the first test we're gonna run on it is Antutu benchmark. This is pretty much a standard benchmark and here the smartphone scores close to 730,000 points, which is pretty impressive. Next up we've got Geekbench 5, where the smartphone registered a 559 single core score and a 2086 multi-core score, which is oddly below the threshold. This was a similar story for 3D Mark's wildlife stress test as well, which showed about a 71% stability rate. And I also asked around for scores and results and they did vary all across the board. You can check out the result discrepancies on screen. But I think that's why it's important to judge real world performance and not just the scores that you see from all of these benchmarks and that's exactly what we're going to do next. Samsung also throws in a neat feature to monitor FPS and performance while in game so we'll be checking out the FPS rates in game using that tool. Now the first game we're testing is Asphalt 9. I've made sure that the graphics are set to high quality and started off playing on the cover display of the smartphone. Here you'll be able to tell that performance is fluid backed up by the FPS readings we're getting ranging between 49 to 60. It stays around the high 50 for a very long time but just sometimes you notice it bounce down. The fun with the Z Fold 3 though is not about the small cover display, it's about the big display inside and you can switch to that seamlessly while in game. Switching over you get a similarly smooth experience although there is a lot going on in this game especially at this moment and frame rates are dipping all the way down to 30 to even 35 FPS which is perhaps because the phone is also driving a higher resolution display found on the inside. The frame rate stabilizes around the 50 FPS mark, which is decent, but not full 60 FPS locked in at all times. So that's something you'll have to keep in mind. Having that large panel though is extremely nice and the game adapts to it really, really well. And when I play this game for a very long time, it's really hard to come back to any regular smartphone. Next up is an all time classic, PUBG. I'm testing it on smooth, plus extreme graphic settings, again, starting with the smaller display. Arguably, things do feel a bit cramped up on the smaller display, although if you look at the FPS reading of the game, it's constantly locked between 56 to 61, and the experience does feel like that. However, just like with Asphalt 9, here too, you can easily switch to the larger display where all the fun begins. With more things now going on, the frame rate of the game naturally dips to around 52, but more important is that slightly stretched look for the game. This is done so that the game fills up the entire display, but there's just something about it that looks a bit off. Nonetheless, if you're someone who likes to play on a big display like this, you'll enjoy the experience and sort of adapt and get used to that full immersion, especially with that under display camera, so you don't get that blemish while you're playing the game. Following up, we've got Genshin Impact, and this is somewhat of a challenge to run on any smartphone here. For some reason, the FPS counter that we've been using for the past two games breaks, and this is a problem that I experienced last year as well, so it doesn't seem to have been fixed. So it says that it's running at 60 FPS, although it's nowhere near that, and you'll see this pretty clearly from the choppy performance of the game. It's unfortunate that these issues still persist, although I feel like this is more about the game's lack of optimization rather than the hardware on board or Samsung's fault. Okay, I quickly want to jump in here and just talk about this experience. I don't have the Galaxy Z Fold 3 with me anymore, and I filmed this a couple of days ago and the voiceover, but I did get a message saying that on Genshin Impact particularly, you have to play a certain bit past the initial tutorial before you can adjust your graphic settings. And this is something that I didn't do with this smartphone, nor have I done with any of my gaming tests in the past. But thank you to FaZe for pointing this out. I will make sure I cover this once I get the smartphone again or in my future gaming tests. 
Last but not least, it's Call of Duty Mobile. From perhaps one of the most unoptimized experience to the most optimized experience. This game runs impressively well on pretty much any hardware and with the graphics cranked up to maximum, I was still able to enjoy a good experience with FPS ranging between 56 to 60. I did feel though that the controls of the game didn't feel as optimized for the large display and this is something that a lot of other OEMs or developers can learn to adapt to. We saw a stretched layout on PUBG and now we're seeing it on Call of Duty Mobile with less than ideal controls. And as we tend towards a future full of smartphones like these, I think it's a good time for these developers to capitalize on the trend and be slightly ahead of the curve and optimize their apps and their games for these experiences just so when these smartphones go mainstream, people don't have to suffer. After all of that playing though, the one really good aspect about the Galaxy Z Fold 3 was that its temperature remained very, very cool. It stayed around 38 to 40 degrees Celsius, which is great and even in the hand, when you open up the device, the natural heat distribution of the phone is just better because of the bigger surface area, so it just feels nice to hold and not that hot. Also, as promised, after about that 2 hour session, the battery of the Galaxy Z Fold 3 was at 64%, which I hope gives you an idea of how the smartphone might perform in, you know, regular daily scenarios or maybe when you're gaming you can compare the battery drop to what we saw here. But that's about it for this video. If you want to see my review, as I said, check it out using the cards or the description down below. Let me know what you guys think about the test. Do you want to see any improvements? All of that in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Do like and subscribe for more videos. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!